I just finished making this 4.21 karat round diamond in a cushion halo. So if you've ever wondered what a four karat looks like in a cushion halo, keep watching. Hey, this is Vanessa from Vanessa Nicole, where I create custom diamond rings for clients all over the world. And I just finished making this gorgeous 4.21 karat round diamond, and we created a cushion shaped halo setting for it. So I'm gonna go over a few of the ways that I make this ring absolutely stunning. Now, obviously we have a beautiful four karat plus diamond here. So it's not like it takes that much to make it stunning. However, I have seen plenty of two, three, four, five karat rings that have just been completely destroyed based on the setting that they're put in. It doesn't do the center stone any justice. And yes, it does look big and sparkly. However, it, the setting does not last long. Diamonds fall out. It is not proportional to the center stone. And I've actually seen the rings crack because the setting has not been made to support the size of that center diamond. So there are definitely key things that I take into consideration whenever I'm working with a stone of this size. So the first step when you're, whenever you're making a, a halo ring that has a cushion shape around the round stone is you wanna make sure that that cushion shape is hugging tightly next to that round center diamond. Because my biggest pet peeve when I see this style of ring is when you see a gap between the corners of that round diamond and the cushion shaped halo. Because if it were a round halo, even though I've seen gaps on those rings too, which drives me crazy, um, it's much easier to not have a gap there by setting the center diamond low and tight. However, when you have a cushion halo, it's really easy to put the round diamond in and have it not quite fit around with that halo. So all of my designs, especially with ones like this, are custom, well, everything's custom made, but this one is specially taken into consideration in terms of how that fit is around that center diamond. So what you'll see is just seamless sparkle. And here, I'll, I'll take my ring off so I can show you what this looks like on the fingers. So you can get some sense of proportion. So don't mind my fingernails. I'm a, I'm a diamond setter by trade. So I just finished making this ring. Uh, no manicures here. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a four carat on the finger with the cushion halo. And you'll notice that it is just completely sparkling. There's no ugly gap between the center stone and the halo because you don't want your eye to get distracted because it, it's gonna focus directly on that dark gap. Trust me, it will. And the second thing that I take into consideration whenever I'm making a ring like this is you wanna make sure that the halo, it's very proportional to that center diamond. So if I were to make a big chunky halo for this, it's just, it doesn't need it. It has such a beautiful size already that you don't wanna make the center stone look smaller because you don't want, I mean, who wants that, right? You want to make the center stone take center stage so you make the halo proportional to the center diamond so that way your eye focuses on the main event. Now as you can see that these diamonds would be a different size if I was working with a one carat or a two carat. So no matter what shape or size of center diamond I'm working with, I always make sure to take into consideration the, uh, the size of the, the halo diamonds. They're not all going to be the same. Every one is case specific. Another thing that I take into consideration whenever I'm setting a center diamond like this is I want to make sure that the claw prongs around the center stone are very sleek and flow in line with the center diamond. So I don't want there to be big blobs of round metal holding in this center diamond. I want the, the focus to stay on this diamond. I mean, that's the whole point, right? <laughs> and so what I do is I create very thin, delicate claw prongs that are very sturdy enough to hold in that center diamond. And I do that by the way I shape them. So they're thicker at the base, so they have a lot of meat holding around the diamond. But from the top view, what you're looking at is a very thin and dainty claw prong. And another very important step is to make sure that all of the diamonds are set incredibly close together. You do not want these dark gaps in between each diamond. Now, whenever you're working with mass manufactured jewelers, it's really common to see uh, a dark gap in between each diamond. And that's because they're trying to space out the diamonds. They have to allow for the casting for shrinkage a little bit. It's just really hard to keep in mind the exact millimeter widths that you're looking for. Whenever I'm making a ring, I source diamonds specifically for that ring. I don't just have a bunch in stock and just set whatever I have. I search out diamond sizes exactly for each ring. So that way it allows me to achieve this gorgeous seamless sparkle just to make sure that each ring is stunning. And I know it's why all of my female clients come to me raving about why their ring is so sparkling and everyone's always commenting on it just when they're out and about because 
there are just extra things that are taken into consideration to make that happen. And uh, you know, there's a time and a place for mass manufactured jewelry, but when it comes to such a special ring, in my opinion, this is not the time or the place to do it. So I am all about the custom ring to really make that pop on your finger. Um, this is what I do for a living. I love it so much. I, the fact that I make rings every day for couples who are in love and it's just so fulfilling. And I just, I love being behind the bench and I'm not just selling jewelry, I'm the one who actually makes it. So I work with you one-on-one -on -one to create your dream ring and it's incredibly fulfilling to hear the result of when you get that ring in the mail. Oh my gosh, it's, it's very exciting. So uh, feel free to reach out and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.